So I just got here and uh, I have a flat tire. Now, the last time I was here to try to film this exact same video, I had the exact same flat tire. It's the inner tire on the truck there. And uh, last time I just aired it up and it held air. So that's what I'm gonna try to do this time. And this is a different tire, by the way, too. I've got, I just got new tires about a month ago. So um, this is just a really odd coincidence. I mean, it's on cursed land, so I don't know if that's it or not. Um, I guess we'll see what other events unfold while I'm here, but uh, hopefully this is just a one-time thing again. So I'm standing here right above this massive hole in the ground. Well, that's just a lot of death down in here. Uh, I want to be here. I want to try. I want to do something to make some money. Anybody in there? <laughs> Stopping at a roadside attraction and buying human bones. I'm legit risking my life for a story for you guys. Well, I got the tire thing taken care of. Uh, well, I didn't take care of it. I just I found that what what it was. It was it was just a little nail, um, and it's just barely leaking. So. Honestly, I don't know where I got the flat tire at. It could have been, you know, 20 miles down the road for all I know. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to leave it on. I've got a dually, so I've got two tires in case it does just blow out. I can I can still drive to a safe place to change it. I just don't like having to change a tire with a truck camper on. I'd rather get to a place where I can take the truck camper off, so I don't want to deal with that tonight. But we are going to camp here tonight at this gas station um, that is on cursed land. <laughs> And I know it's cursed because uh, of something that is just right over the hill. You can barely see it by the highway, but I'm not going to show you guys. We're going to go over there tomorrow and I'll show you guys why it's cursed. Um, I tried making this video, I don't know, six months ago. And I had such a bad series of events, which would include uh, a flat tire. Bad news. Uh, I guess I got a flat tire when I was out there by the cave. Um, Obviously this service station isn't gonna be able to help me out. But my batteries on my cameras died, my e-bike died, um, just all sorts of stuff. I, I just, I couldn't even finish the video. And this time, um, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get the story because the story is insane. And you guys, I think would really enjoy it. For right now, I'm gonna show you guys around in here. Up here, there's a, a rack up on the wall and I think that is where uh, they used to stack tires on that rack right there. It looks like there was maybe like a lift or something down here and right there. Those big hydraulic lifts that lift the car up. That hole over there is probably where they changed oil at. This room smells horrible, but we'll go in here, I think. Let me get the light on. Looks like maybe an electrical panel right there. Um, I don't know, maybe some, maybe this is where they stored all the auto parts. Yeah, look, there's these racks, or these, these bars where it would be like shelving units coming across here. So this is probably where they had like all the oil filters and parts and things like that. Um, here's another little room. It's full of water, so I'm not gonna go in there, but uh, yeah, look, it was more shelving, so this must have been like another storage. And we got an attic, which I can't see, but what you guys can see. Urgh! Anybody in there? Urgh! I don't know, I'm gonna shut this light back off. Um, okay, now, this I would imagine would be maybe where like the, the employees would maybe the office, I guess you want to call it. Um, little window here, that way the boss can come and, you know, look at all the people working, make sure they're doing their job. Um, this I'm guessing is like a pay window. And then this is probably the waiting room. It's the people driving by, so they're probably gonna think I'm weird. Hey. <laughs> 
Uh, this would be the bathrooms. That right there is where the toilet would have gone. There's a drain in the wall, so that would have been a sink and countertop right there. And then access to the attic. Another bathroom. I'm sorry also if there is like uh, bad words or things written in the graffiti. I don't even know how to read half of it. Um, so I just apologize. This looks like where the gas pumps would have been at. And same with where we're camped at. And that thing looks pretty sketch. Like it looks like it could fall down at any minute. But it's been here for a while, so hopefully just tonight it'll it'll hold up for one more day at least. <laughs> So we're gonna do a spam egg roll bowl tonight. I've never heard of it. Um, it's keto friendly. Let's start by cutting this into strips. Here we go. Just supposed to fry these up and Kind of get them like crispy brown a little bit. There's my mason boy being cute over there, huh? Just napping, you ate your food, and now you're just tired, huh? Yeah. Put a little bit of butter in there. Just so it doesn't stick to the pan. I'm gonna try to put butter in there. There we go. Man, that butter just made it smell really good now. It's supposed to have some shredded cabbage in it. So I'll shred this up. I'm almost done with all the spam. It's not really getting done at the same time. So I'm kind of having to like pull out pieces individually. I had the chair and a table sitting in the bathroom and it just fell down here into the floor. That <laughs> scared me for a second because uh, I guess the storm's blowing in uh, again or whatever and it's just been blowing the uh, the skylight around and blowing the whole camper around, moving everything. I keep hearing like wind whistling through the windows so I hope it doesn't become a bad storm tonight. Now we have to saute the cabbage. I cut too much. So I sauteed it for about two minutes and it says to add a tablespoon of sesame oil. I don't really have anything to measure with. So I'm just going to use a spoon. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Get that stirred in. Oh, that smells really good. It smells like, uh, I don't know, Chinese food. I think that's good. I don't want to overcook it. This has already turned out to be a horribly ugly egg, but at least I have enough oil in there that it seems like I'm going to flip it. Yeah. While the egg is cooking, I'll go ahead and put the spam on. Basically just pile that on top. I go ahead and went ahead and put the egg on. I'm hoping that the yolk is a little bit soft. And then uh, just add some sesame seeds to it. 
and we're done. There we go. Spam egg roll bowl. Yeah, my egg's still a little soft. Let me get a bite though with everything. A little bit of cabbage. A little bit of egg. And a little bit of spam. It actually does kind of taste like an egg roll. I think I'm going to cook this more often. There's actually only took me maybe 15 minutes all together to cook. So it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be out here. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, it's creepy, don't get me wrong, but it's not as creepy as I thought it was going to be. The weather is perfect. 70 degrees right now. And it's supposed to get down to 61 tonight. It's a perfect sleeping. I don't even think I'll need the heater on or anything tonight. Right now, I just, I, I can't complain about nothing right now. I got a full stomach. He's got a full stomach. We got a warm fire here that we're sitting in front of. It's getting kind of late, so I think I'm going to head in. Um, get ready for bed. You ready for bed, buddy? He never answered me for some reason. Thinking about eating your food, or are you just, you just burying it? Just eat it, buddy. Yeah, good boy. morning it's not quite the same scenery I'm used to looking at out there it's just uh, the abandoned gas station in a really nasty parking lot uh, no trees or wilderness or anything pleasant to look at <laughs> that's okay though I, I admire I don't know how people make graffiti like that um, I mean it's obviously an art that not a lot of people can do and uh yeah i don't know i mean it's cool i just it's just not what i'm used to <laughs> breakfast was good but uh i think it's time to get down to business we need to talk about why the land here is cursed right now i'm actually standing in front of diablo canyon and diablo canyon is not why it's cursed but that's where the story begins so the story starts here in 1878 and uh, there was a Navajo encampment here. These Apaches came by and they saw the Navajo encampment and they decided, you know, they, they would go in and just murder everybody. Then the Navajo leaders caught wind of all this and they sent a group of 25 Navajos to go and find these Apaches and avenge the uh, attack on the encampment. The, the trail led them into the canyon where it kind of stopped at the creek so they were confused they weren't sure where they all went so they just hung around here and just tried to do a little bit more investigating and then that's when they felt some hot air coming out of the ground so i'm standing here right above this massive hole in the ground and what it was was the apaches were hiding out down in this hole there's actually a just a huge cave down here 
and uh, they had their whole tribe down there including horses and everything so they had like a campfire made probably cooking or for heat or whatever but they used these holes as like a chimney system so the hot air could come out and not suffocate everybody inside obviously once they found the heat coming out of the hole that they knew you know the apaches were hiding down in this cave system so they went back to their encampment that was a little further north from here and they got everybody they could so i'm staying here right above the entrance to the cave system which is just right below you see these logs kind of coming down like this it's right below there there's an entrance and that's what goes into the caves once they returned back what they did was they stacked timber and sagebrush and everything against this entrance uh, once they blocked it completely they lit it on fire and their hopes was to burn out the apaches that were hiding inside there's the entrance it's definitely creepy uh, but yeah, let's go down in there. Hello? Looks like some sort of makeshift entrance way. Oh, it's tight in here, I already hit my head. Look at all these stacked bricks, or not bricks, but rocks stacked like bricks. Like you can see the one of the holes in the ceiling up there where smoke would have come out. Oh, a doorway. Okay, that's creepy. I don't know where that goes. All right, look above me right here. Big rocks, all right above my head. I'm legit risking my life for a story for you guys. <laughs> right now would be a good time to show some love, push that like button. <laughs> okay, this is the big hole opening, the one we were standing above earlier. Like just imagine the entrance being down there and you're in here just camped out with the rest of your Apache um, friends, people, whatever, family. And just imagine all of a sudden you smell smoke and it just comes barreling in here. Um, I mean, granted, this would have let a lot of smoke out, but I don't know if they blocked that off as well. Um, trying to keep the smoke from coming out. I don't really know. Um, I guess we'll just keep going in here further, but I just couldn't imagine being in here and all of a sudden this place is filling up with smoke. They didn't have lights and stuff back then, so it would have already been dark in here. And then to just add in a thick layer of smoke, I mean, you'd have to be getting pretty desperate once that started happening. This looks like a whole other spot maybe that used to be a room. Um, maybe that went all the way up and this looks like a doorway. I don't know if I'd want that room though, because the top of the room is just a big boulder. I wonder if something's up there too. I don't know. Let's go in here. So I have the camera footage is shaky, but it's really muddy and slippery down here. Oh, look at that. That would have been another room up there. Okay, before I go trekking through all this mud, um, you can see like this, this room is pretty big and there's, there should be several big caverns like this down here. So you can see how like a whole tribe of Apaches could hide out down here with their horses in here actually as well. But once this all started filling with smoke, um, desperate to save their lives, they, they slit the throats of their horses and was using the blood of the horses to put out the flames. Um, when that didn't work, they were using the horse carcasses to block the holes or the, the entrance way to try to keep the, the smoke out, but that didn't work either. Um, when it was all said and done, 42 Apaches died down here and their horses. Um, and they've said since then, any other tribes in this area have said that this 
area, this whole land, including this cave, is cursed, which I could see why. I mean, there's so much death down here. And just me coming down here is just creepy. Like, it gives me goosebumps. Like, you kind of maybe see the goosebumps on my hands or on my arms. Like, I don't get goosebumps. <laughs> um, so this is like freaking me out. So obviously, I mean, just, you could just almost imagine um, just how horrible it was down here. I, I, I mean, not saying that either side was right or wrong, but still, that's just a lot of death down in here. Um, while we're here, actually, I'm going to do one more thing. Hang on, you guys keep an eye out back there. Uh, Okay, no, it's not a product placement, but this company, uh, Olamo, reached out to me. They, they saw that I did like a paranormal investigation video, so they reached out to me and sent me this EMF meter. Um, these are what, you know, ghost hunters or paranormal investigators use to see if there's any kind of like activity, any kind of like spirit or entities in here. Um, I'm just gonna use this while I'm in here and see maybe what we find and um, we'll see if it works or not. But yeah, I'll make sure I put a link down below in the description if it's something you're interested in. Okay, let's get this turned on. So green is just good to go. Nothing's going on. Um, this light will turn yellow and then red depending on how much like electromagnetic frequency is down here. Um, usually the higher the frequency, especially in an area like this where there's no power lines or anything nearby, then uh, that usually means there's like an entity nearby. So I'm just gonna have this out while we're walking through this cave a little bit more and we'll see if we can find anything. Hopefully this mud's not too bad. It's so quiet down here. Nothing so far yet. It's another big room. I'm just going to hold this off to the side so the camera doesn't focus on it. I'll let you know if it goes off. That's all right, just keep walking. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through there. I don't think so. That's pretty tight. I don't know, maybe that, that might go into a bigger part of the cave. Or this might be a dead end. Obviously it's a cave, so there could be other ways that it goes through. Um, let's head back and see if there's any other ways around. that room when we first walked in there's that doorway down here and that just led into that room oh and it does go down in here further yeah I'm not I'm not gonna go down there It does look like it opens up a little bit down there, but I don't know. I mean, that's that's a lot of tight crawling to get down into an area that might just be another dead end. Um, it could go either way. I mean, if you were thinner, which I'm sure the Apaches were a lot thinner than I am, um, then uh, you probably could get through those thin cracks a lot easier. 
So we're gonna head out. Um, there's a lot more to this story. <laughs> it gets even stranger, so hang on. That whole situation that happened between the Navajo and the Apaches is, is I guess what caused this area to become cursed, but it just gets worse from there. Um, it was a, about two years after that incident happened and they started running the railroad through here, uh, the Santa Fe Railroad. Now the railroad got stopped at this Diablo Canyon and they couldn't cross it until they built like a train trestle. So they, they kind of started becoming like a, like a, almost like a town right here with uh, just cheap structures that were built. Most of them were just brothels and gambling houses and, and bars for the, the men and the workers to, to do what they need to do while they're waiting to, to go back to work. And uh, obviously since it wasn't a town and there was no sheriff, then things became pretty bad pretty quick. It kind of became known as like a lawless area and you really didn't want to come through here because you're probably gonna get robbed or shot. <laughs> we move a little bit further forward, 1907. They build this, uh, this road right here, which is called the National Old Trails Highway. Um, this was the road that came through this area. And in fact, in order to get across the canyon, it had to go down and zigzag along the walls of the canyon right here, and eventually cross the creek and back up on the other side. Um, and that happened for a while until later they built this bridge here behind me, but um, that's, that's way later in the story. The town that I'm in actually is called Two Guns, Arizona. Probably a lot to do with the, the violent history it had, but um, the very first settler that came here was Ed Randolph, and Ed Randolph, um, he built a store, which was one of the buildings by the entrance to the cave. I'm not really sure which one exactly, but he built one of those, and he was the one that you know claimed all this land right here. It's 1922 and uh, a couple named Earl and Louise Cundiff come into this town and uh, they love it so much that they purchase 320 acres from Ed, the, the original settler, um, then they bought it for a thousand dollars. And then uh, with that 320 acres, they decided to build this big store here um, that I'm in. And now I could be wrong, the history on this place is pretty vague. The best of my knowledge, this is their store. This was kind of an all-in-one. It was a store, restaurant, and a gas station. And you know, if you gotta think about it, there, there was nothing else out here. Um, there's probably not a lot of places to get gas way out west here. So um, I'm sure a lot of people stopped here and uh, was, was pretty happy to see this store. Right back over there where the people are standing, that's actually the Death Cave and uh, Ed Randolph's store. One of those buildings right there. Now we're gonna head to the next place. And the next place now, is what I'm excited to show you guys. Fast forward a couple more years, it's 1925. It is so windy up here. Uh, Earl and Louise are over there just chilling, you know, they, they're enjoying their store. And uh, all of a sudden this guy shows up in town. His name is Harry, Harry Miller. And uh, this guy, he's just like a shady snake oil salesman. And he decides, you know, he sees money signs. He's like, uh, I want to be here. I want to I want to do something to make some money. Now he ends up leasing some land from the Cundiffs and, uh, and with that land, he decides to build a zoo. We're now standing in his zoo. Uh, you could see these really just crudely built cages. Um, back then, they didn't care about animal cruelty rights or anything, they just, he just thought, build the cages, put them in there. We'll just kind of walk around so you can kind of see. And it's really cool because there's still so much here after all these years. This seems like maybe the main walkway. So people would be walking along here, even though, you know, they probably could just fall right off into this ravine. But uh, people were smarter back then, I guess. These cages, they're just so small. Like I, I hope there was not a big animal in here. Couple more up there. There's some wood left with chicken wire. It's the wood. Another cage. So this one looks a lot larger. This may be where they had something like a mountain lion or something in. Kind of looks like that's maybe where the mountain a lion or whatever animal would be maybe their little their dens or whatever maybe up there.
I don't think that's a walkway. Another pin. This place is huge. I don't know what that is. Obviously for smaller animals. This was the entrance to the zoo right here. You know, since the animals already were making the money, he needed to make more money. And he decided to open up like a restaurant and a gift shop, which I can only assume are these two rooms right here. There's this area. But just very crude construction, you know, rocks and, and some timbers holding up for the windows. I imagine there probably was a roof in here at one point. Um, I actually see a, a chimney, so he probably had a big wood stove right here. This is the other side. I don't know which one was which. This looks like another doorway here. Actually, if it was me, I probably would have had the restaurant here and then had this, it's like a patio overlooking on top of the animals. Um, so that, maybe that's what it was. Maybe this was the restaurant side. Either way, even though, you know, a lot of just evil stuff, this guy was just a bad shady guy. Um, he really had a big dream and he was determined to make it come true. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to build all this. I, I just, I couldn't imagine. He had to have had like a lot of help, hired locals or something. Now Earl also, what he did was he went down into the death cave and he cleared out all the artifacts that were left down in there um, to sell in his gift shop. But included with those artifacts were the bones of the Apaches. So he literally had a stack of bones in that gift shop to sell people. Um, I couldn't even imagine stopping at a roadside attraction and buying human bones but um times were maybe different back then i don't know this this looks like uh yeah it looks like uh, the bathrooms can you imagine this men and women or whatever yeah look it would have been maybe two toilet seats on each side Imagine just sitting right next to somebody, going to the bathroom. And then there probably would have been a floor here and that's where, where all the nasty stuff would have gone. Shitter was full! I'm glad things have progressed since then. I don't know if I'd want to use something like that. Eek. So we moved ahead a few more years and they realigned the highway when they decided to put in Route 66, which we now know is the historical Route 66. This is the new highway before Interstate 40 was here. This was the Route 66 that went from the you know, east to west coast. So now once they moved the highway over here, um, all the traffic was bypassing Earl and Louise's store over there and it was bypassing the zoo. So, you know, what do you do back then? <laughs> well, I'll show you what they did. They rebuilt bigger and better on this side of the ravine where the highway is. So I believe where I'm standing here is where the gas pumps used to be at. I want to say there is some sort of roof structure across here over to the building. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot left here. So I couldn't even fathom having to rebuild another store right after you just built the other one. It's only been a few years and then here they are over here having to rebuild. But still, Harry Miller had a way worse situation. Yeah, Henry had to rebuild too. He built a whole nother zoo on this side of the ravine where the highway's at. 
you can see where it says mountain lion is real big and he did this on purpose because just right behind the camera here is where the gas station was at henry and louise's gas station so when people would come to the gas station he would be over here and he would have the chains that would have the the uh, coyotes tied up with and he would shake the chains to get the coyotes to howl and that would get people to come over here or at least look over here and of course they're going to see this massive sign that says mountain lions and who wouldn't want to come over here imagine this is the entrance and this is probably another gift shop maybe your shop or restaurant right here. I don't know, not much left of that, but here's the steps that goes down to uh, where the animals are all at. So you can see same kind of crude construction of, of cages. Um, I imagine this is probably not where the mountain lions were at. This is probably just something small, but uh, kind of the same setup. I imagine they they walked along here and just viewed up here at the animals. At least the cages look bigger on this one. This looks like one big cage right here with like a room up there, maybe that's where the den was, maybe this is where the mountain lions were at, I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't, this is a lot of construction. Like I, I could not, I'm a contractor and I can't even imagine coming in here with no heavy equipment, nothing like that, and just stacking rocks to make a structure like this, it's insane. And what's crazy is I'm still, I'm surprised that there's still anything left. Okay, so this is where this part of the story takes another twist. Um, Henry, the guy that built this place, ended up having a confrontation with Earl, the guy he leased it from, the one that owned the gas station over here. Um, I don't know what it's about or what it was about, but one way or another, Henry ended up murdering Earl. Um, Earl didn't have even a weapon on him, but somehow he was found innocent of the murder and he came back here and he decided he was going to take this land from Louise. She wasn't going to have it and uh, I guess fought it in court or whatever they do back then and ended up finding that he was just lying and just like I said, a, a shady snake oil salesman. So maybe because of that or for whatever reason, he just left town with his tail between his legs and decided that he was going to go and start another zoo at another location. I'm not really even sure where the other spot's at, but ultimately he ends up getting bitten by one of his own gila monsters and dies of the poisonous bite, which, you know, karma's a beach, I guess. And uh, maybe that's what he deserved, but Louise remarried and had their gas station over there for a while longer before it burned down. And before you know it, 1950 comes along this zoo is closed down i believe that's closed down the whole town itself starts going downhill by the 60s um, even though they ended up putting that gas station in the one we stayed at last night i believe is 1963 they put that gas station in it wasn't a few years after that this town pretty much went down to nothing and uh, here it is it's just one big ghost town uh, it has been bought many times over and people want to come in here and invest and put a resort in or whatever and they just have never been able to do it for one reason or another and they end up selling it to somebody else and that person sells it to somebody else and here we are 2023 is still nothing actually last time i heard and i think it was 2020 it was purchased out and they were planning on putting a resort still nothing now this land is just prime real estate there's all this history right here is a cool name for a town two guns i mean come on and then it's right here off interstate 40 it's prime location for something a resort a casino um even just a gas station i don't know but somehow it's still nothing here i i really i honestly i just hope that they don't come in here and just bulldoze all this for parking lots 
but uh, whatever they bring in I hope it's something that incorporates all this history and this story can just continue on and uh, do like stories do just entertain people for years to come all right well I think I've taken enough of your time I really do appreciate you guys for staying along this far in the video this is probably gonna be the longest video I've ever had so um, if that's the case if you got any kind of enjoyment out of this or learned anything from this knowledge then could you please leave me a comment tell me what you thought like the video subscribe if you haven't already and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next week thanks bye